Welcome to Listen to Black Women. I'm Shamika Sanders, and beside me are my many shades of black women co-hosts, Kiara Kelly and Brandy Victorian. <laughs> you know you are tuned into another dope episode. We're about to get into it, guys. You ready? Recently, Wale brought up the centuries-old conversation of colorism, um, but specifically related to his career where he was asked on The Breakfast Club if he thinks he were a light-skinned rap artist, he would be more successful. His response was, colorism helps in anything. Racial ambiguity helps in anything in America. That's just, it, it is. That's just what it is. Like, probably except for maybe sports. And the very next morning, B. Bozeman, an actress on Empire, basically backed up his statement. She didn't say anything about her own personal experiences. She just said, stop acting like this isn't a problem. I mean, the question we're asking, does colorism really hold people back from success? I feel like it definitely can. You are talking to someone who is a firm believer in about 95% of the time, colorism is a thing. It's also interesting for him as a man because normally when you think of the black community, mm -hmm. darker skinned men are considered more of the desirable, the masculine, yeah. showing a strong, at least that was the narrative before, I don't yeah. personally feel that way. And then the narrative for dark skinned women was they were more aggressive, mean, while light skinned women were more pretty and proper. And Gina. So it's, it's just interesting how it affected him as a man because normally I hear about dark skin men in a positive context. Mm -hmm. Well, I guess it also depends on talking about the success aspect of it, what you define as success. Exactly. So where I think in the hip hop community, the darker you are, the rougher your story, the harder you had it, the better the career. So for Wale, I would think that he would see success, but then again, if we're talking about crossing over to pop culture. Right, because he's success. Is he still in D.C. doing music in the studio booth? No. Like, he's, <laughs> he Wale is. has obtained some success. Yes. For his type of music, he was only going to go so far. That's, that's the thing. So, yeah. Now him, but I'm much more interested in women. You know, I, I would have liked B. Bozeman to say, you know, what her, her story was. Or you were talking about Yara Shahidi um, yeah. and the issue there. That was an issue that came up with a lot of people giving criticism to Gronish because they felt that the main cast members were all in the beige range <laughs> of blackness. The beige range. They were. They were. And you know, she responded, I'm not that light skinned. That was mm -hmm. her response. And it was just interesting to me because number one, how you view your own color, mm -hmm. everyone has different shades of what they think dark yeah. to light is. Right. Mm -hmm. And so she also has, you know, the right to self-identify, but to me I'm like, that's light skinned women a light-skinned woman, and also, I think when when shows are packaged in a way that there's just one monolith of the black experiences being represented by one color, I feel left out. Yeah, I can't watch Girl Nation find myself. Mm. And as a black person, when I'm seeking any of our types of media shows, I'm looking for myself, and I'm looking for how the person who looks like me is represented on that show. And a lot of times, the woman who looks like me is the backup comic relief, mm. where the light-skinned woman is the main front and center love interest. And I think that it's just a primary example of how, yes, your color is holding you back from success because when can girls that look like me snag leading roles, unless they, they, they create them for themselves, Issa Rae. So with all of that being said, let's take it to the tweets and see what people are saying about this colorism conversation. Recently, Erica Campbell discovered that her daughter had been bullied over her dark skin on a recent episode of Where the Campbells. Uh, look, I was like, light skin girls. Look at our family. Look at our family. You and dad, light skin, dark skin. Auntie and Uncle Ted, light skin, dark skin. Auntie and Uncle Des, light skin, dark skin. The only two dark skin, dark skin families is Auntie, Auntie Lisa, Uncle Errol, and Nana and Grandpa. That's still two. That's still, it's not. Look at all these beautiful brown women in the world. Look at I'm Gabrielle saying, Union. She's no, brown, no, 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 wait, gorgeous, saying, amazing husband. Look at Kelly Rowland, beautiful. Like, these are beautiful brown women everywhere. Know, but ma, 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 think about all like, around you. You're light skin, so you don't really know exactly how it feels, you know? Yes, yeah, so Lilo786 said, black is beautiful is not much consolation to a dark skinned girl when you are rarely affirmed by popular media. And black people are very exp explicit about what a pretty color is. Mm. Very interesting. That's deep. I would say that when I saw that clip, I had a personal connection to it mm -hmm. because we actually had the pleasure of interviewing Erica Campbell. Yeah. And when you think of dark skinned girls having someone to look up to, there was a, mo a moment when Erica pulled me aside and she was like, can I take a picture of you and with you? Because I want my daughter to see dark skinned women who are really making it in this industry. Yeah. And so to me that signifies that 
there has to be some tie between colorism and success for her to think that I'm a rare mm -hmm. person mm -hmm. in, in the, a mass media setting. Absolutely. Yeah. We asked the audience when they were first introduced to the issues of colorism, with 39% of the audience saying the way their family and friends spoke about skin color, 36% saying the, the lack of representation in TV, movie, music videos, and 25% saying watching TV, movie, videos. So we got representation, watching yourself on TV, and also and the house, and the home. family, friends. Yeah. I would definitely say mine was family and friends speaking about mm -hmm. skin color. Yeah. yeah. And then bolstered also, by <laughs> yeah, all I, of this. I went to USC in Los Angeles and mm -hmm. if you can imagine in LA colorism is a huge thing. So much so it's one of the reasons I left LA. Yeah. Like mm -hmm. no joke, because it was such a heavy issue. So mine came from just mostly seeing how the men interacted with me and the categories they would place me in. It wasn't my sister girlfriends. My sister girlfriends look like all y'all, mm -hmm. but the men were categorizing us. Do you feel like anyone has taken away from your success or accolades because they feel like you got things because you were light skinned? I don't think so. I mean, I've never heard anybody say anything like that to me. Um, I mean, I also think for me, being overweight, it's just like, that was always, like, to me, that overshadowed. If I got a pass for being light-skinned, I was overweight. So it was like, it didn't matter. You know, like oh, those yeah. kind of, you still have something, you yeah. know, kind of thing. So I never felt like, oh, I was super desirable or anything like that because of skin color. Yeah. It's weird for me. I just feel like other people put layers onto me um, more than I think about it. But that's also a privilege of not having to think about it. Yeah. <laughs> of the solutions, I think, Acknowledging privilege, yes. as Brandy just did, is one of them because you know I've never had gotten to navigate the world just existing in my skin color without people saying something about it. Mm -hmm. And now, if I can just be totally real, because we as the black people are coming out and being like, let's celebrate dark skinned women, people are overcompensating, y'all. Mm -hmm. I, I literally have people when I'm navigating this world as a hello beautiful person, people will stop me and go, you know you're beautiful, right? <laughs> You know yes. that, right? You, yeah. But you know it. <laughs> Don't pity me yeah. either. Yeah. You can acknowledge privilege and you can understand that we've all been um, uh, brainwashed. We've or all been brainwashed <laughs> yeah. thinking that one color is better than the other, but then also don't go the other extreme by pitying dark skinned women because yes. you feel like you have to overcompensate for centuries yeah. of yeah. us not being the beauty yeah. idea. And That's I think very real. One of the solutions is by definitely when you're raising children or even when we're talking, being open to different ways that beauty presents itself yeah. in women. Yes. I in all shades. Right. And people who have the yeah, opportunity to shape the narrative doing their part, you yeah. know, like bringing up Easter Ray and just, I mean, for us as editors in the images we use mm -hmm. to have darker skinned women, women with different hair textures, like I just feel like we all could kind of play a role yeah. in showing diversity. Like Gabrielle Union, she saw that her stepsons were only liking women, uh, dark, light skinned women mm -hmm. on Instagram or social media and she pulled them to the side and was like, show me, I think she asked them to tell me who are some beautiful or, I guess, sexy, dark skinned women? <laughs> <laughs> and they, they drew a blank. And that moments like that, you have to stop and you have to teach kids. We gotta nip it in the butt when it's young because exactly. we are just growing up with these ideals that we had from like passed down and these school things that we just per constantly perpetuate and running through the playgrounds and being calling people darkies like Erica Campbell's daughter. So I think like these, this is all good. Yeah, yeah. start at the beginning. Yeah. Thank you guys as always for watching Listen to Black yeah. Women. Catch us on Madame Noir and HelloBeautiful.com. And until next week guys, keep it colorful. Yeah. <laughs>